how do you get attention to your music as an artist? One of the ultimate ways is marketing and 50 Cent dropped some interesting information on Jay-Z's marketing budget. We're going to play this clip of 50 Cent giving y'all inside information and we think y'all are going to enjoy when, when it. So check this out right here. When when you've been an artist that's been prioritized for, by a major label, you've had marketing dollars around your launches. Mm -hmm. If you watch Jay, he's not launching without the money. Exactly. He always has like some kind he of like launching, sponsors. You see 444 and, yeah. and just everywhere, little buses and all kind of stuff riding around. And, and you got to say to yourself, when is the last time you've seen someone do that? You haven't even seen it for Beyonce. Your pop divas like your Mariah Carey's, your uh, Jennifer Lopez or your Jenna Jackson's, those different artists would at points have marketing campaigns that reach the excess of $20 million. Major record companies are not going to spend that much money on their project, so they got to figure out how to create campaigns that mirror that or the audience doesn't understand. Like their their audience will feel like she was so big. Remember how big she was? What they're saying is she had so much marketing. Remember how big the marketing campaign was? God. 50 Cent. It's a bar. With more bars. More bars, man. He he's at the top for just bars and regular speech outside of music yeah. when it comes to like game and the music industry and stuff. I, I, I really rock with that. But one thing that you mentioned from this, because there's so many points that we can break down from this. The first thing I want to talk about is controlling perception. You brought that up. So I want, you know, you know, give your perspective on how that relates to controlling perception. Yeah. So the last bar being, you know, what do you say? Uh, fans would be like, oh, you remember this artist and how big they were. And what they're really saying is, Hey, you remember that time we put a lot of money into the marketing, or the label put a lot of money into the marketing, and so I don't think enough people think about how much of marketing is really just controlling perception by making the artists seem bigger than they are. Mm -hmm. We do it right, like we we do it a lot. You know what I'm saying? Um, I sell artists on that all the time when they talk about campaigns. I'm like, yo, sometimes the goal isn't necessarily to get you popping; it's to make you look more popping than you are so people feel like they're behind yep and they they feel like they need to catch up man i've seen you in all of these different places that, that i pay attention to and know about like who are you i've never heard of you before right yep a lot of times that can be controlled with marketing dollars right um and so i like that because like i said that's something that we stick on to a lot it's like a lot of this, these things that we're about to do for artists during campaigns you know if the budget is there the content is there the narrative is there it's really just like, yo, we about to make you, we about to string this together to make you look more lit than you may be right now. But if it hits right, it's going to click and you will be, you know, mm -hmm. lit. You know what I'm saying? Like, you will be lit. And it's like so much of that really can be controlled with just marketing dollars. That controls the platforms you can be on, how many other platforms you can be on, how long your ads run for. Um, you know what I'm saying? Like, so many different elements that contribute to that, that overall just, I guess, power of litness, you know what I'm saying? Or, um, or the overall like perception of litness. And that it, there's even another like concept that we throw out a lot where we always talk to clients about building omnipresence. Yep. Right. And so for, for those who are listening, omnipresence is really just seeming like you're everywhere to a, a, a small group of people, right? Or a massive group of people, depending on how big you are. But we, we always explain it to a small group of people, but let's just say a, a target audience, right? Like omnipresence is seeming like you're everywhere to this, this target audience. And so, the more that you can make that happen, which an example could be, like we said, you're posting content, so I'm seeing you because of that, right? These eight different outlets I follow are, are posting about you. I see your ads. I get on this playlist, and I see you on this playlist, right? I turn on the TV. You're on, like, Jay Leno or some shit, right? And so you as a consumer start to feel like, like, damn, this person must be lit. I'm literally seeing him or her everywhere not even thinking about this is a person like me who strung this shit together exactly like this. Yo, we're going to make sure you hit these accounts five or six different times and have your ads retargeting yep. these people, right? Yo, keep posting so you, you pop up in the algorithm and then, you know, your label go get you on Jay Leno or something, right? Um, because for whatever reason, we feel like your fans are paying attention to Jay Leno. But literally all we're trying to do is control perception. And, That's it. You know, and it's like who, he that can control perception, you know what I'm saying, literally controls the way the fans move. 
Yeah. That perception becomes reality, right? Yeah. Because, like you said, people begin to feel like there must be some power, some importance to this thing that I continue to see. Yeah. Right. And everybody feels like this thing is everywhere. Somebody else is saying this is important. So it feels like everybody else is saying it's important. When I see it in enough places, then therefore it has to be important. Yeah. Maybe I should check it out and be a part of it. That is a real thing. So that perception becomes reality is like is not a phrase for the sake of it. But the point that I think about hearing all that is the risk of not having the same perception when you're at a certain level. Yeah. Right. He said Jay Z doesn't release without a certain amount of money. And we remember when he did the Samsung deal and it was exclusive on Samsung. Jay Z's done multiple deals like that, mm-hmm. right? Where he navigates and uses some funds and sponsorships from something else yeah. beyond the label. Now we know that it's to make sure that the money's there to maintain the perception. Yeah. All right. Not just, oh, this is a cool business move in general, right? No, I can't risk looking like I didn't hit on the same level I hit on before because that might be a big level for an artist lower than me. But for me, it's a step or two down, Mm -hmm. which has an impact. And once you have the perception of going down, that perception can continue and manifest it with me falling all the way off. Yeah. Right. So as you navigate. All right, your battle of perception will change once in the beginning you're trying to appear bigger than you are, like you said, right? But then over time, it's all about maintaining because you might not even get as, you know, you might not be able to get any bigger. Yeah. Right. Uh, so you're playing two sides, right? On the way up, I'm trying to get bigger. I get big enough. Now I'm trying to get bigger and I look smaller. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> That's yeah. the game I'm playing. Let me take a quick second to say if you're an artist trying to blow your music up or if you're a manager, a music professional in general trying to help an artist blow their music up, I have something that's a game changer for you and it's completely free. As you may know, we've helped multiple artists go from zero to hundreds of thousands of streams. We've helped multiple artists go from hundreds of thousands to millions of streams, chart on Billboard, go viral, all of that stuff. And we've now made the way we've branded multiple artists and helped them go viral completely free, step by step in Brandman Network. All you have to do is check out brandmannetwork.com. You apply. It's completely free. But the thing is, We're not going to let everybody in forever. So the faster you apply, the better your chance of getting accepted. Brandmannetwork.com. Check it out. Back to the video. Yeah. I also think, too, that clip is important because, you know, how many artists have you heard say they want to move like certain bigger artists, but they don't really understand what's being put into the market? But like he said, if you're a priority well, and this is a different time, so we got to throw it out there. But yeah. I, I'm assuming that clip was late 2000s. Yeah. But, you know, he said, if you're a priority act, but they spending $20 million on you. $20 right? million. And then there'll be an artist somewhere that's like, hey, I want to move like that artist. But you don't have $20 million. $20 you know what I'm saying? Different. And like, so that's imp- that's important context because like you see them doing things. You sometimes see things stringing together. And you just think that it's just happening by the, the, the graces of the universe. And it's like, no, bro, money was spent. I personally have trained myself to assume that any moment I see an artist having was paid for. Yeah. Even if I'm wrong, it, it, it soothes my brain, you know what I'm saying? Because I don't try to start racking myself for the answers that ain't that ain't going to be there. Right. And, like, that was something that just kind of came along as I had, like, other conversations. I, I think I told you about it before, but one of my most eye-opening conversations ever uh, was, this was maybe a couple years ago. Yeah, this was, like, pre-pandemic. Mm-hmm. And, um, my friend, actually, I don't want to say his name. One of my friends is 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 a, is a great guy, a great manager, and he's managing an artist that started popping at the time. And he was going to L.A. to just meet with a bunch of different labels about his artists, and he had invited me out. You know what I'm saying? So we could split Ubers. You know what I'm saying? Be cheap. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember we were meeting with this one, uh, this one head of A and R, the label, and she's talking to him, and she's like, "Man, like I admire y'all for really wanting to do the indie route." But do y'all have the money for for marketing like you think you do? And then my homie's like, yeah, you know, we got, you know, this investor thinking about, we, you know, we're pulling this money together. He's making this much. I think we can make it happen. And she's like, you know, I don't know. Like, you know, do you know how much Dua Lipa spends on marketing? And my ears perk up. I'm like, how much How much does Dua Lipa spend on marketing? And she's like, a lot. 
I'm like, nah, I mean, I, I assume that, you know what I'm saying? But like, how much is a lot? She's like, no, like a lot. I'm like, no, but like, what is a lot? You know what I'm saying? She's like, how about I say this? It can be anywhere from six to seven figures a month. I was like, bro, that's crazy, bro. Y'all could be spending anywhere from a couple hundred thousand to a millions a month on Dua Lipa, which I get is Dua Lipa, you know what I'm yeah. saying? But that was when shit started to turn for me. And I, I got the argument she was trying to make to him is like, hey, you telling me about this 150K that you about to get from your investor. That shit cute. Like that's a that's that's three weeks of Facebook ads for us. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like in the, like in this system. And I think on one hand that could be discouraging for as an artist, right? Because you know, because to them, like 150 thousand dollars is a lot of money, right? Yeah. Like when you come into that situation, and then you kind of hear, like, man, this this number that I kind of aspire for is like a drop in the bucket compared to what it really could be. Um, but then on one hand, I also think it's, it's motivational. No, maybe not motivation, but it, it kind of brings you to a sense of reality because now I can assume, like, okay, they spend, you know, at least X amount of money on Dua Lipa, you know what I'm saying, a year. I can go start doing some calculations and be like, man, is this shit really hitting like I think it's hitting? Or is it contextual to the amount of money that was spent? And maybe my $150,000 is on par contextually to what I got from it. You know what I'm saying? Not yep. the same exactly, but, you know, maybe her $20 million got her 100 billion streams or some shit. And your hundred fifty thousand got you a hundred million. You're like, you know, it's not exactly the same, but you know, contextually, it is what it is. So, but that conversation, like, bro, when I heard that, I'm like, man, do a leap of spending that type of money, bro, on her. And that was just digital, bro. Like, that wasn't yeah. even considering like PR, press, all this other stuff. Yeah. That's when I was like, oh no, bro. Like, artists need to hear things like this because they will go into a situation trying to mimic someone who is spending twenty million dollars. And like the budget isn't the same, or even the work ethic, bro. Like, how many times have we heard artists go like, "Oh, you know, I want to be like Playboy Cardi." Playboy Cardi doesn't post on Instagram. He doesn't post on TikTok. And it's like, yeah, but Playboy Cardi's label is probably spending a couple hundred thousand dollars a month. You know what I'm saying? You got a couple hundred thousand dollars a month? Mm -hmm. If so, go for it. If not, yep. Hey man, get, get back to that content grind. You know what I'm saying? So I I like that there are conversations like this to add context to. You no, know, not even just marketing, because I think we hear all the time like, "Yo, marketing is important." Right at this point. I'm assuming anyone that's listened to this channel has had that shit beat into their brain. But as an artist, uh, one way or another, you come across the conversation of marketing is important. But no one ever gives a number. You know what I'm saying? Like, no one ever puts yeah. numbers to that shit. It's like, oh, it's important. And the artist will be like, hey, so I got $1,000, so I could do what Dua Lipa's doing? I'm like, well, no, no, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, you, could, you could get shit moving. But, like, no. Just be real with you. You know what I'm saying? Unless some lucky shit happened. But... I think that needs to be out there more. Artists need a a a, a point to like shoot for. You know what I'm saying? Like a, a a number to shoot for. I think. You know. No, I agree because context is everything. Yeah. Right. Even if it helps you understand that this is why I'm not getting there, but forces you to at least focus on what does my progress look like. Yeah. Right. Or maybe if you can become aware of how much money the, all these artists are spending on different levels, then you can compare it to the right artists. You're like, oh, I'm I'll perform at him when I spend my thousand dollars. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. And that's the beauty of um like working with people who do it. Like that's one thing when people ask me, like, what's the value of working with the agency when we work? And I say, look, man, context is one of the biggest beauties of working with an agency, people like us who have seen multiple things. Cause one thing I see a lot of artists mess up on is they will have results. And they don't know if these are good results or mm -hmm. bad results. Yeah. So I've seen artists stop campaigns early and they were killing it. And it's like, no, bro, keep going. But they don't have the context to know it was good. Yeah. They just know I haven't hit what I wanted to yet. Yeah. It doesn't feel right. And then I've seen some artists think they were killing it. And it's like, nah, bro, you need to slow that down, bro. Like, don't waste your money. Right. But we have the context from different genres, similar artists, mm -hmm. different platforms, different times of the month, different times of the year. We have all this context. So that becomes one of the like superpowers of working with people who've done it in some form of fashion, right? It doesn't have to be an agency. It could be a, a manager who has multiple artists, a label, or you could at least just talk to communities. We we got our community, brandmannetwork.com. It's free. Hop in that thing. But like context is so important for getting yourself out of this 
forest, right? That's what we seek all the time. Yeah. And we we go try to have conversations. That was why you kept on saying, hey, yo, but like, what do you mean by a lot yeah. of money? <laughs> yeah. We're always searching for context so we can better position ourselves and how we help artists or our expectations for campaigns and some of our other industry aspirations we um, we want to do around artists. So like the industry is in some senses, a, a dark box. And we try to help as much as possible, right? In, in, in bringing light on that box, right? But still, there's so many pieces of information to gain um, and talk to as many people as you can to figure out what they're doing or people that they know are doing. So like, that's definitely one of the biggest takeaways, um, that context aspect of it, the beauty of it. Yeah. Because boy, you know, like when 50 talked about Jay not releasing into, unless he had the money to control that reception, but then throwing that 20 million number out there. I was like, man, like that's, <laughs> that's some cash. But yeah. you also look at how the older artists are feeling a certain level of pain because they're not getting that 20 oh, anymore. Yeah. Yeah, that's I'm over. Beyonce and Mariah. <laughs> I'm not getting that 20, even though I am Beyonce and Mariah, I got to finesse and bring together other deals and things to mm -hmm. still mimic a sim similar level. But um, yeah, we would love to hear that conversation. We wouldn't want to um, continue that conversation um, through in different pies and probably have some people on, but definitely want to know what y'all think. So like this video and comment on this convo. What do y'all think? What's your perspective on, on it? But on top of that, all right, moving on to the next thing,